Good people, I'm Dimitri. Welcome to another video. I've been waiting for months to receive a final retail production sample for this keyboard. And if you pre-ordered one, it's definitely worth the wait. Let's talk about the new Mountain Everest keyboard. You know, 2020 has been tough. Let's not make our components suffer. Let them breathe, let them relax. With the Eclipse Air Series by Fantex, your hardware will appreciate the size options and you the experience. Available for every build at different scales and price points too. They all share the ultra fine mesh front panels engineered specifically for best airflow with perforations of one millimeter that also act as a dust filter. Check out the P300A, P360A, P400A and P500A down below. The perfect eclipse for 2020. What Mountain is doing here is really bringing some fresh innovation into the keyboard industry that I hope other companies might take advantage of in terms of add-ons and DLCs, as I would call them here, because what I have here is the Mountain Everest Max keyboard. So basically the, the TKL keyboard with the additional numpad and with that display dial, which it's funny to think of Type-C being everywhere on this keyboard. It probably has more Type-C connections than Logitech's entire gaming lineup. Of course, Mountain is selling different tiers of the keyboard, either the Everest Core by itself, or you can go just with a numpad, or with a dial, or the whole thing together, as it's called the Everest Max. I would say getting the Everest Core by itself as a TKL keyboard for 150 bucks is not worth it, in my opinion. Many other TKL options are available for much cheaper, but if you plan on getting the numpad later or the dial pad later, yes, then potentially consider the Everest Core with the expectation to buy the add-ons later. It's a really refreshing take on modularity that is actually kind of useful and cool. The keyboard will be available in two colors, silver or black, with a variety of switches to choose from and all your usual layouts too. It's a TKL body, as you can see, and despite on the black model it looking like plastic, it is a full anodized aluminum top plate with some plastic underneath. And that is because we have multiple channels for cable routing, which is great. The Type-C can connection is included over here that is pretty deep. We have this pretty unique dual texture design on the aluminum faceplate. First, we have the brushed aluminum and this CNC milled aluminum around the switches. I would highly recommend you get the silver model because the black model doesn't look as premium and also it will reveal all types of dust and particles that get settled in that pattern and it's not easy to clean. We have perimeter lighting all around the keyboard, but unfortunately it's not really visible to the user, nor does it spill much light to the surface. So it's only visible at an angle and I feel like that's a little bit pointless. The keycaps here are double shot ABS, not as strong or rigid as like your double shot BBT keycaps, but the font is clean and the smooth texture is quite nice for the first like 24 hours and then things get greasy and like just all your oils are visible. The switches are also removable so you can swap them out for your favorite switch if that's what you desire. And my only complaint here is that the RGB illumination is not as bright as on my other RGB uh, clear housing switches. I am told there's some lubing going on and the stabilizers are manually clipped, especially for the space bar, which is really stable. Here's a sound test, take a listen. You'll notice there's a USB port in the back of the body 
and it's not the USB pass-through, it's an actual USB 3 hub. So I can plug in my USB card reader and transfer all the photos and all the media from the SD card using that USB hub. And that on the keyboard is brilliant. Thank you. One really cool way to angle the keyboard is to use these magnetic spacers. So the feet, both on the keyboard and the numpad are magnetic and are removable. And you stack a few of them uh, into this magnetic slot and it will angle the numpad and the keyboard as well. Brilliant. It's nice and sturdy. They will not go anywhere, giving you a lot of stability on the table. On both sides, you can see the USB-C female connection into which you plug in the numpad with this really unique type C mechanism at the bottom that allows the type C to exit from the right or the left side because you can mount this numpad on either side of the TKL keyboard. And having the ability to mount it on the left side away from the mouse area with the keyboard angled like it would normally be in a TKL form factor is just really nice for space saving, especially around the mouse area. You do have to retrain your left hand to utilize the numpad on the left side if you're coming from a traditional full-size keyboard, but of course you can move them back to the right side if that's what you're used to. Aside from the Type-C connection, there are also some magnets that hold the two pieces in place. And if you're not like lifting the keyboard, uh, if it's just stationary, it is absolutely stable. The numpad is also unique because we have four TFT buttons that are also screens and you can customize them to do whatever you want, opening up a program, great macros, do some system commands, media controls or whatever. And of course, because they're screens, you can change the actual graphic. So it gives you that visual indication on what that button does. Both the brightness and color vibrancy are excellent here. And the only thing is that the transparent housing of the button may obstruct some of that graphic that is underneath when viewing the button at an angle. One really interesting thing you can do with the numpad as well, because we have that USB-C extension included that by the way, you can use with the keyboard itself if you want to route that uh, through the channels underneath and use your custom USB-C cable, be my guest. But here you can use it to connect the numpad to either side of the keyboard. So it's not really attached to the frame, but it is slightly offset to give you a little bit of flexibility with uh, positioning of this whole thing. The cable is also quite thick and rigid, so the numpad won't go anywhere. What I like to do with the numpad in this configuration is add additional spacers at the bottom. So the numpad is slightly more angled and that gives you better visibility for those TFT buttons. But probably the most interesting module to most would be that display dial. So first of all, it connects with a Type-C connection to the body, either on the left or the right side. Again, giving users that flexibility just as you have with the numpad. By the fifth try, you will understand exactly where to plug it in without even trying to find the connection on the body. And I love the hot swappable nature. You can simply unplug it, plug it back in uh, on the opposite side, for example, the same thing with a numpad and everything is instantly recognized in the software. So you don't have to restart the computer. You don't have to replug anything. Everything just works. All the physical buttons on it are your media controls and the function button for the scroll wheel. Notice they're not illuminated, so they won't be visible in darkness. And beside it, we have the notification LED for caps lock, scroll lock, and num lock. As for the screen, it only displays information and has rotation in either direction. It's not a button. With it, you can select the clock, either date and time, timer, or the stopwatch. You can cycle between the five profiles that can be saved to the keyboard. Then we have the lighting effects, volume adjustment that is instantaneous and brightness of the illumination of the keyboard. I really like the PC info tab that shows the usage of your CPU, GPU, hard drives, your networks, and etc. Lastly, we have the actions per minute toggle if you're into that and a custom mode into which you can assign what the rotation of the dial does in the macro settings. I feel like this display dial has a lot of potential for future implementations. So for example, my feedback to Mountain has been enabling or disabling certain functionalities between each menu. So in the clock, for example, if I don't care about the timer or the stopwatch, let me just deselect them, uncheck them in the software so I don't have to cycle between them when I enter the clock functionality. The same can be applied to your PC info configuration where you only care about say GPU temperature and not just usage, you can enable that. Furthermore, when the timer runs out, we have this flashing animation, which I think does the inverse of the screen and that gives you better visibility uh, in certain conditions. So being able to change the color of the background, for example, would be fantastic. Granted, you can change the accent color in the software from the default yellow, which by the way, looks awesome to something else to match your RGB lighting, for example. At this current state, I think they've perfected the module as best as it can be right now in terms of the actual connection. 
the hot swappable nature, the software has been super stable, have had zero issues with it, but it is a $70 add-on if you're going from the Everest Core to the one where the display dial is included. So I feel like they must add a few additional functionalities into the driver software for this display dial to be a better value add. Perhaps something with game integrations would be cool or productivity things when an email shows up, you get an email pop-up notification on the screen or something cool where like the screen is pretty good resolution so you can read things like fun facts about mountains or the brand, you know, that would be cool. My only complaint with the dials that I feel like it's a bit slippery. I feel like there's not enough texture around it. So rotating it with just one finger, impossible to have any control. You have to use two fingers or three to give you that one step increment. Lastly, in the box, we have this wrist rest. It's not anything too exciting. It's the width of the TKL body. It is magnetic, so it's supposed to just snap in place, but I find the keyboard to be more comfortable without it. In terms of the driver software, everything is intuitive in terms of lighting customization, your macros, your key bindings, the display dial settings too. It also seems like Mountain is in a really good comps with media and customers in terms of trying to add features and improve the overall user experience, like what I mentioned earlier earlier about like adding little check marks for different uh, subcategories for those dial menus, for example. Hopefully that will be added later. I love that everything in the software is updated in real time when you reposition the numpad, for example, or when you plug in the display dial from the left side to the right side. And aside from a few crashes and weird bugs in earlier builds, everything in the final build that I'm using now is completely stable. So there you have it, the Mountain Everest keyboard. What we looked at today was the Max version with all the attachments included. And it's a really ambitious keyboard that I really am excited to see what comes next from Mountain as a brand because these USB-C connections on all these attachments open up opportunities for other peripherals that can simply plug and play for the future of this Everest keyboard. I am super impressed what they've done with the software. It's super stable, it feels complete, all the functionality and everything is easy to navigate. And for their first driver release, I mean, yes, it's awesome. This whole concept of modularity is very well executed, giving you the ability to mount a numpad either to the body or with the USB cable, giving you the ability to mount the display on either the left or the right side. The angular adjustment of the keyboard is pretty genius with the magnets. And I don't feel like there's a limitation with the Everest aside from having ABS keycaps instead of PBT. But of course, everything is hot swappable anyway, the keycaps and the switches. I'm really excited to see what the future of that display dial brings to the market because it has a lot of potential for really cool information to display to the user. Uh, it's accessible, it's visible, it's modular. What more could you ask for? All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. Let me know what you think of the Everest keyboard as the baseline of the core. It's a bit expensive, but as a package, I think they're heading indefinitely in the right direction. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.